Good morning, I'm Blackjack Gabbiani. Welcome back to Blackjack. And it is just too goddamn early to watch that chat. You know, I mean, we do have 11 minutes before this actually starts, so it's literally too early for it. It's also 5.49 a.m. And it's too early to hear people talk about Goku for Smash. Okay, not only has Sakurai specifically said that would never happen, <clears throat> Goku has been in Smash since Brawl, and his name is Lucario. They even have the same English voice actor. <sighs> uh, so I hate to burst your bubble, guys. I know, uh, Gerald does sound like a good choice, and he would be on paper, but he's not from a video game, okay? They made a video game out of his source, but he's, this is not the original source, okay? And that's, it's considerably less stupid than all the people wanting Goku, but <sighs> Sakurai has been very specific on this. Okay? You have to originate from a video game. And, I mean, I think there is a little bit of wiggle room, considering Rob was a video game peripheral, and not an actual game character originally. But I think that only opens the door for characters like Captain N, or Seikana Sanshiro, who, um, while not actually premiering in video games themselves have always been part of the industry. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, yeah. We're not... Have I been wearing my ribbon the... Yes, I have. I've been wearing my ribbon the wrong way around. But now it doesn't look as good, so I'm just going to take it off. You know what's funny? I had jury duty the other day. I'm so glad I didn't get it. Uh, um, like, I want to be on a jury sometime. You guys know me and always wanting to share my opinions on things. <laughs> as I am doing right now. <coughs> but um, yeah, the trial they were talking about was four days. Oh, I don't know. I'd be there until tomorrow. Uh, uh, I ain't doing that. Mm. Uh, heavens. Anyway, this was for some reason setting off the metal detector. It's like it's it's cloth, but apparently there's metal somewhere in here, and I don't know why. Uh, me and the security guy couldn't figure it out. He was just like, let's go. <laughs> you know, no one's going to try anything with a freaking hair bow. <laughs> well, I imagine someone could, but... <sighs> Not me. <clears throat> Maybe if it was federal court, I would have been tackled to the ground, but no, it's just county court. Walking around town is pretty interesting. Like, walking around near all the government buildings. Uh, there was, um, it's like talking about, like, all the early history and the prehistory and all of this kind of stuff. Um, and there was one thing about some pioneer lady who was supposedly 120, which would make her the oldest American in history and... Uh, one of the oldest people ever. Needless to say, uh, what the plaque says and what can be physically found oh. are very different. <clears throat> she was quite old, though. She apparently, like, actual documents record her as being, like, in her late 90s. So, that's really good, especially for, like, <clears throat> you know, the... 1800s and all. <laughs> anyway. Talking about this. I'm not going to talk the whole time. But I got no clue. You got no clue. Alright. Um, 
I'm not sure if there was a leak or not. People were talking about one character and they're stating it like fact, but uh, it's not everywhere like Terry was. Um, and other people are claiming that the picture going around is uh, either fake or from something else. Which I guess would still be fake if they're presenting it in this context intentionally, but you know what I mean. I'm trying to figure out if his pose there means anything. See, usually when you do it, you would do it this way. But turning your wrist towards the camera is really weird. Uh you know, people say that man doesn't age, but you can definitely see it. He seems to age slowly, but he's definitely aging. <clears throat> I will just join you back. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna join you back. I mean, it's entirely possible he's just being silly, trying to do a dab or whatever. <clears throat> anyway, I started a little early. It's 5.59. My mom might come in and say goodbye before she goes to work. So, just be like, hey, Emma. <clears throat> anyway, um, I got no clue. I mean, we all know I'm still wanting Tara Branford, but... <clears throat> uh, I've kind of accepted that ain't gonna happen, at least not this game. I bet everyone's trying to analyze if the color brown there means anything. I mean, it's it's an unusual stylistic choice, regardless of if it means anything or not. That's a really, really weird color to use. Okay, it says six o'clock. <clears throat> I keep... Oh, okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Masahiro Sakura, director of Super Smash... There we go. We'll be using today's showcase to give you a first look at our next DLC fighter. Actually, hardly anyone knows what we'll be announcing today, even among Nintendo staff worldwide. Oh. The development team and other stakeholders have been working on this fighter with the utmost secrecy. Oh. Which means other Nintendo staff around the globe will only start making preparations for release after the showcase has been broadcast. Oh, so it, so it won't oh, be available okay. right away. Please understand, uh, and it will take a little time. Please understand. I think even many Nintendo employees will be surprised to see this and say, Wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's all share in the fun of getting our hands on the latest information. However, even if you say, that's not the character I was picturing, I hope you don't have any hard feelings. <laughs> We've prepared a fighter reveal video. I'm starts, good with I almost anyone. It is pretty quickly. Now, let's do this. Okay. Tell us. <laughs> Fire. Fire Emblem? Is it Byleth? The time has finally come to unleash the forbidden spell of Zaharas upon our enemies! Okay, I've definitely heard that voice actor before. <clears throat> Is it, uh, what's her face up there? What were you thinking, charging right into an enemy's trap? As you and I are one, I too am trapped within this void. In time, As? our hearts and minds will cease to be. Are you prepared to die? <laughs> yes. I thought as much. I also do not wish to die. What's the point of giving someone a voice Yet. actor if you don't give them lines? <clears throat> there is no other choice. You know, in games with dialogue and like actual you must dialogue. Join Smash. Yes. 
People were talking Join about this. Smash Brothers already. What in the world are you waiting for? Oh, God. Is she always a sarcastic little bint like this? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Smash House. So Smash House confirmed. Smash consumes even the darkness itself. <laughs> <laughs> All the other sword guys. Okay, getting the crap beat out of them? That means someone else is coming. Sothis herself, perhaps? Than expected. I see. Too many swordsmen are there? <laughs> and you, you wield the sword as well? What will you do? <laughs> I don't know. So that is how you plan to win the day? You summon me? So be it. I reward your cleverness this time. Is she coming? Oh god, it's the it's the three house leaders. Oh How is this? Oh, they get to change weapons. Okay. <laughs> Violet recruits Violet. <laughs> Okay, let's try this. To you, both sides of time are revealed. Through Smash, show the world. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm down. I like how they acknowledge the criticism of Fire Emblem characters. And why they get the hate I, uh, yes. there you have over from Fire say Emblem three mario and pokemon who have more characters fire emblem three houses was released just last summer so it's still very new even so you'll soon be able to play as them in super smash brothers ultimate this release is planned for january 20th. i am not opposed to this you have the super smash brothers i didn't ultimate want it but it will also be available for purchasing i didn't want so i didn't want joker but joker's fun to play as or three houses i'll explain a few things so nobody wanted piranha plant but everyone agreed it was amazing what is fire emblem an it's excellent really question to pronounce in japanese <laughs> the producer said it's okay if i just say fire emblem but when writing it, if you don't write Fire Emblem, the Fire Emblem police will come and get you, so please be careful. What? The series first entry what the hell is an emblem? In is that say some sort of a joke? Of with that you need to know the you might be wondering what makes it particularly tactical. <coughs> well, it's tactical Permadeath. in that it simulates combat. You can think of it as moving pieces in a board game. Or in mm -hmm. other words, a game in which you advance units across a grid. So, playable character from Pokemon Conquest next? Eh? When we eh? talk about tactical games of that era, there were lots of ones in which you command tanks, aircrafts, and so on. But Fire Emblem was unique because each unit was a specific character, sort of like in role-playing games. Plus, something made it stand out from other Nintendo products. Characters could permanently die. <laughs> Yike. That's pretty direct language, though. So perhaps we should just say they're sleeping with the fishes. Oh, God! But really, if a character <laughs> fell in battle... Do you not you know the, kind of, the specific connotations? <laughs> Recent entries in the series maintain this concept of permadeath to some degree in classic mode and what have you. 
but a lot of games now allow strategic withdrawals, so to speak. I wonder if they could do it like Final Fantasy Tactics, where you have the to reach games, them in a certain amount of really turns, Never to be or they die. Scary. But it's like, like, it's not immediate. The game's stories are told like chronicles of war, with increasingly distinct characters and engrossing scenarios. Increasingly distinct. Several characters also appear in the Super Smash Bros. You know, I bet Byla's original English voice is kicking himself is right now. You know, more than There's usual. There's actually a reason for this. When I was considering how to incorporate Fire Emblem Fighters into Super Smash Bros. Melee, I thought it might be interesting to reflect the turn-based nature of the original game. First comes your opponent's team. They attack, and you counter. Is Next there a reason that the characters from this series say Ether? And now, but Fire when, a, when it's spelled out, it's Aether. Those are different words. People who aren't Japanese in particular might be thinking, 17 games? There are that many? <laughs> well, if you include Fire Emblem Heroes in the remakes, but you don't include the Satellaview game, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Sharp FE, and Fire Emblem Warriors, then it comes out to 17 games. Let's try saying them in the Fire Emblem Can You Say It Challenge. Oh, my, my, my. I'll give it a try. Shadow Dragon on the Blade of Light, Gaiden, Mystery of the Emblem, Genealogy of the Holy War, 3 CS 776, The Blinding Blade, The Blazing Blade, The Sacred Stones, Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, Shadow Dragon, New Mystery of the Emblem, Awakening Fates Heroes, Shadows of Lydia, Three Houses. That's why he's... So, you saw how I was counting in a weird way, right? I was counting in binary. This is I wasn't even paying attention. Fold this here and you get one, and then you get two, then two plus one equals three. So this would be four, five, six, seven, and eight. You just get weirder every then day. Sixteen. Add one and you get seventeen. Awesome, isn't it? You can actually I mean, it kind of is. Thirty-one in one hand. <clears throat> And if you use both hands, you can count all the way up to 1,023. If you've given up counting the knots in the tatami mat, you could always give it a go. <laughs> what is Fire Emblem Three Houses? In Japanese, the male version of the main character is called Bereto, and the female version is called Beresu. But in English, they share the same name, Violet. That makes a lot more Violet sense. becomes a professor who ends up leading one of three academic houses. With absolutely house, no guide them through their sort of educational and, background, well, also mom just left, so bye mom. After a certain incident, five years pass, and you meet up with your grown-up students to battle against the other houses <coughs> in their a region. shocking incident. It's a very sad game in which your former allies become enemies, turn hostile, and try to kill you. I've been to class reunions. So Actually, I, I haven't. The Are they all like that? Emblem, three houses. I played an early version of the game before its release. I've done the same thing before, with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, for example. Must be nice! I wait until launch to experience it, or we'd have never made it in time. For that title, I borrowed an early version of the game for two days, ran around all the areas, saw the ending, and realized for the first time, hmm, I guess we can't really have Breath of the Wild's Princess Zelda as a fighter. Yeah. <laughs> I did the same this time, but with there being three houses and multiple endings, it was really hard to get a feel for it. I mean, you could have... And of course, there weren't any uh, walkthroughs. Breath could of have. the Wild Zelda's costume. <clears throat> you know, like you have Dark the Link has multiple as routes and the a costume. Is very different. Your experience will vary depending on the route you choose, and many of the characters you meet will adopt different roles in the story. Yeah. I'll try to avoid spoilers when I'm talking about the fighter. I hope you'll understand. <laughs> Before my demonstration, I should point out that when I did the Terry Bogard showcase video, I mentioned that it was recorded a month in advance. Yeah. But this time, we have to account for the holidays and such, so we're filming two months in advance of this video's release. <laughs> right now, it's actually November. <laughs> Time travel! I'll show you might differ a bit from the finished version. As always, I'm using a special in game camera and such for mm -hmm. demonstration purposes. Yeah. Here I go. Are you still going to be using two controllers at once, though? I mean, you clearly have other staff people there. 
Okay. So, so this is I'm okay with this. I might have... I mean, people were talking about Dante, and I might have preferred him a little bit, but... It's maybe a bit better than Robin's, but that's about all you can say for them. Throws are not their strong point either. Their grab lacks range. But actually, you could say that they're distance demon. Oh, that's always good to hear. The heroes relic they you know, I am still good with the direction you input all of these. Sticks. Each of the heroes relics is a weapon that appears in Fire Emblem Three Houses. They look like bones, and there's a reason for that. First, let's talk about the weapon Violet uses. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna say that. The Sword of the Creator. Forget it. The Sword of the Creator here is Violet's default weapon. They use it for flurry attacks and tilt attacks, such as down tilt attacks, where it takes the form of a whip. They also use the sword for dash attacks and other moves. Alright. So is this a changing stage as well, or is it uh, random? They'll whip the sword upward to launch enemies in the air. Like, you get variants on attack. it. They'll wave the whip sword over. I'm just gonna beat up the legendary hero here for a while. The hit detection for this attack lasts for a relatively long time. Whip sword. Really <laughs> Ivy from Soul Calibur like uh, can never be in this game because this is a game for good little boys and girls who eat their vegetables and go to bed on time. Or, into the air with that <laughs> and in addition, or vegetables, as uh, Super Butter Buns would say. Like this. That's I'm gonna beat the crap out of my baby boy for a few minutes. Damage reaches a certain percentage. He can handle it. He's tough. He's Kirby. He survived the apocalypse that percentage multiple you times. To be careful. You may find it helpful to midair dodge. I've already shown this, but you can also use it to latch onto edges. So that's the up special. <coughs> now for the sideways of this. This is Airfar, the same name as the weapon from Celtic mythology. Um, my, uh, First, we'll go through the forward and back air attacks. As you can like see, they have a long it. reach, like so. Okay. Marth's air attack keeps opponents in check too, right? Arid bar. If Violet does the same thing, you'd win out, so you should be able to beat it. Okay. Next, the side smash attack. This also has a long range. It'll connect even from here. That looks good. Also, if you add an upward tilt, it will be stronger. That sounds awesome. And if you've knocked an opponent down, the side attack won't hit unless you add a downward tilt to aim for them. I mean, you're throwing a lot at us, but I also get the feeling the way, the the that it's going to be a lot powerful. easier once we the actually start playing. So it's not suited to close combat. All right. It won't deal much damage, and it won't I mean, launch opponents far. Yeah, it's a, it's a stat. Why, as a rule, of course, it's not suited to close combat. The blade part upward. Not a staff. A staff Down would be. Ugh. Next, okay, it is six sixteen a.m. I don't usually get up for like another six hours. Byleth will simply swing the lance like this, but again, it has excellent reach. For example, even when your opponent is at this distance, it'll still hit. Actually, you can do a smash attack to charge forward a little, like this. I'm just going to write this down in my but as you discard expect, right now. Be easily shielded, so be careful. Well, you can use it in air and you'll carve up a large area. Yeah. Returning to the side air attacks from earlier, they have great horizontal reach, but they lack verticality. Yeah, so this complements it well. Although you'll be vulnerable when you land. Even in my now for the downward inputs. For these, by the top use an axe called a mirror. But they it's named after look a weapon that appears in Ugaritic myth. First, the down Ugaritic myth. Wow. It really is strong. They look. You can try for a meager cool. effect with this attack. Next is the down smash attack. A heavy swing of the axe back and forth. As you can see, it has a great deal of launch power. That does sound cool. And for the down special, Violet channels all their energy into a devastating strike. 
It's a bold move, similar to the Falcon Punch, but here's what makes it different. When readying the move, there's a super armor effect. Oh! Which allows you to withstand an And of course, I'm going to contact Netbug. Just so you know, <laughs> if you execute a Falcon Punch at about the same time, it plays out like this. It's a bit slower than the Falcon Punch, but due to the super uh, So, armor how about the fifth ballot slot? Unless you get grabs. Another right. notable aspect is that it lets you pass through platforms. While you're charging up, you can breeze past platforms like this to reach a lower area. It won't let That's you cool. jump, but you could use it as a surprise attack. Well, it's not really a surprise. If you're telling us, also, we can, you can, we can do it. The move. That's the cool. Takes a while. So if an opponent runs behind you during the move, you can quickly change direction. <laughs> nice ass, Falcon. Even though it can be hard to land a hit with this move, it can be really effective when used against a group of opponents. Sounds good. Plus, even if you fail to land a direct hit, any opponents on the ground nearby will still be launched a little. Ah, shockwaves. It's as if the quaking of the ground launches them. By the way, earlier I talked a little bit about the other Fire Emblem characters' moves. I don't recommend using this down special against fighters from the Fire Emblem series. Oh, really? You just get loads of counters. <laughs> you can't that much power in a single attack. Counters can actually multiply the power of blocked attacks. And using oh. easily anticipated attacks like this can just get you hit by counter after counter. <laughs> Next, we have the neutral moves. Maybe the that's what I gotta do. called Fail Not, which shares its name with the bow from the Knights of the Round Table. It only appears I thought that's what he moves. said, but I, I also thought it was like... Attack. Fail this attack knock? is similar to a move of Pits and other fighters like him. Yeah. It lets you spin the weapon around. Which I have no idea what that would mean. Is that the dining it's hall? Also easy it's gotta to be the dining hall. <sighs> Maybe I could with start the special, working on how to work my counters. Finally it get that pretty freaking right? black shadow But there are a few noteworthy spirit. aspects to this bow. First, the biggest difference between this bow and Lynx is that once you enter the Yo, command, you can can't charge see it me. <laughs> you can't release it partway through the charge, so when it does fire, the arrow travels at high speed. It's also very powerful. That said, you can still cancel out of the stance using the shield button. Alright. You can also change direction while in the stance. <laughs> It works up until this point. They're really working on um, detriment versus payoff here, aren't they? You unleash a powerful arrow that looks like a beam of light. Okay. Doesn't have a name. You perform this move like something like that should have a name. Down. You charge up power like so. Charge a bit more and then fire. But again, you'll need to take care when using this move. For one, when you've powered up the move to its max, there's no way to cancel out of it. Okay. Not even with the shield button. In other words, you're committed to firing it. So you see, a situation like this is pretty terrible. <sighs> I'm gonna tell Once you all about how stand, powerful this character is, but also how to anything, beat the living crap out of them because they quite suck. The risky attack to use against fighters who have a move with a reflector effect. But you could always just aim into the fray, as it is, after all, a long-range move. I keep waiting for both of them to Letting stand so that their shadows are fully opponents. in the yellow part. So you need to think carefully when using this projectile. I don't know why. Byleth's final smash is called Progenitor God, Ruptured Heaven. In the original game, there's a move called Ruptured Heaven. This is an enhanced version. As you can see, okay. you team up with the mysterious Sophus and launch an attack together. Alright. Progenitor God, Ruptured Heaven. Now, let's talk about the color variations. Sounds it's like set something up you so would... that the default and odd numbered color variations are male, while the even numbered ones are female. However, Progenitor the God third, Ruptured fourth, Heaven and fifth sounds like something are, you'd be you see, reminiscent like... of the house leaders. Okay, those are nice. Those of you who played the original game will of course understand what I'm referring to. I like the smoothness on the, the sixth two player tights. On Sophus, who you just saw earlier. 
and the seventh and eighth variations have a different hair color, which is based on based on something that occurs in the course of the original game's story. Didn't we see this variation in the final Smash? Did we? Anyway, though, the... Progenitor God Ruptured Heaven sounds like something Next, I'll introduce the stage. related to Giratina. For this one, we of course tried to recreate the place where you spend most of the game, Garrick Mach Monastery. This is how Garrick Mach Monastery is laid out in the original game. From All these, right. we chose to have it cycle through the marketplace, reception hall, bridge, in cathedral, all in one stage. It's the type of stage that rotates through different areas, such as these four. Let me such as? The that appear in these four areas. No, you say such as when there's more than what the you're showing. The first area is the marketplace. I think this is where a lot of people come to do their shopping. Well, yeah. The guests that appear here are students of the Blue Lion's house. Dimitri, Dedu, and Ingrid. Dedu. Not Dimitri, Dudu, or Ingrid. Their names are a bit difficult to say. They're largely from the Ingrid? Of Fargus, I guess so it's if you're Japanese. That means they have a monarchy. For that reason, I guess you could say Dimitri is the future king. He had quite the difficult life and may or may not end up with just one eye. He's an may or may person. not? There are vendors on either side. In the original game, these are important booths where you buy all sorts of things, but... Uh, here you can break them, you see. Uh... If you do break them... The stage will this is my statement on small business! Mm. I wonder where people will buy their supplies now. <laughs> Anarchy! Anarchy! You often pass Just go this scoop area it up off the ground! Places, and you end up talking to them a lot. Moving through these areas is possible thanks to this mysterious platform. Just when it seems like you've come to a stop. That's kind of nauseating. Back down. We broken through the ceiling and slammed into the building. And the guests in the reception hall are Edelgard, Dorothea, and Petra of the Black Eagles. <laughs> Take note, it's not it's spelled Petra. Edelgard. They're from the Adresian Empire. And as Why is Dorothea dressed like a sexy man. cop? Edelgard is one of the characters who is central to the conflict. Depending on the path you take, she'll go through some... You see, the smoothness of those tights is just real nice. I don't know what. You'll notice there are prominent chandeliers above the stage. It's possible to knock them down. Gosh, those are spiky However, too, ain't they? actually reach it, even though it's their stage. You can reach it with other fighters, though. <laughs> so, it's nice if you can work your way up there by getting lucky and being launched up, or perhaps by using another fighter as a stepping stone. There we go. I made it. <laughs> and you can knock it down. Also, you can break this table. Like so. What about the one on the other side? Just sign that reads Fooding Cousin in the Suzaku Castle stage. It can break if you launch the opponent into it. And there we go. Range. So, is it okay to break the tables now? Next up, the bridge. The camera rotates 90 degrees, creating this long area. It's very wide indeed. All right. It's similar to the bridge of Elden stage. The guests are from the Golden Deer, Claude, Hilda, and Lawrence. They belong to the Lester Alliance. <laughs> Her skirt's not moving around. It should be. Because it's an alliance Her of many hair noble is. families, you could say that they have a wide assortment of members. And Claude is the sharpest of the bunch. Okay. Incidentally, both Claude and Hilda are the names of characters that appear in Genealogy of the Holy War, the fourth title in the Fire Emblem series. All right. I guess once you've reached the 17th game and are creating 40 characters for each new entry, you're bound to get a bit of name overlap. <laughs> name well, yeah. The must be tough. Hey, it looks like the Pegasus Knight is busy training. Yay! As for the bridge's design, it's just a long pathway, plain and simple. You can expect plenty of blows to be exchanged at the edges of the screen. It's wide, but you could also retreating say length is width here really because shines. you're stuck on one-dimensional plane. Suits the Golden Deer perfectly. All 
Alright, and the last area was what again? The last area is the cathedral. Yes. Only when thinking throne room, but I knew that was right. The guests appearing in the cathedral are Seta, Flane, and Rhea. There's Seta, who appears to have an extremely strong bond with his sister, Flane. She seems to be under the protection of him and Rhea, who you can see fighting during the opening of Fire Emblem Three Houses. All right. All three have character quirks related to their true identities. Oh, secret identities. I feel that Flame might be saying shush at this point, so I'll leave it at that. I like Rhea's design. Stage. All it has are these platforms. Being the last area, it may be a place where some intense battles will be waged. <laughs> It'll cycle through each location in about two Are you trying to give minutes. us a game hint? Let's see, Byleth in action. Okay. Okay, today we'll have a tag team battle in Squad Strike with the DLC team titted against Fire Emblem protagonists from throughout the ages. That'll give us precisely five players per side. Alright. All right, here we go, Joker. Joker! What? And Hero! Okay, what are you doing? Gee, we really made a lot, huh? Banjo! By now, I think you know what I'm doing. But basically, I'm trying to defeat all five opponents with just a professor here. But as expected, it's going to be a pretty tough battle, so I'm using anything I can get my hands on. <laughs> it's not going to land that easily. Uh-oh, this is bad. See, look, Sakurai uses items, I better and so distance. should you. I'll use this chance to attack. Unless you're freaking boring. Yeah. That's scary. He's invincible for a moment here. <laughs> Lots of explosives. Ouch. Holy perfect shield of that, huh? Good one. I wonder what capture card they use. I mean, he's probably this, playing it on a like computer this, too. Like so. If he's no anti huh? Doing yeah, it. Uh, it's a soccer ball connected. <sighs> on a beta version. Using it on their programming on. computers. You're in a good spot, mom. Mom? Ah, uh, I shouldn't have taken that. Oh, Cardiboard. mother brain. Well, I guess no one uses projectiles. At this point, it doesn't matter if Gardevoir's there or not. I feel like the enemy might get this smash ball. See? They got it. But I mustn't give up. No, you mustn't. I can't waste the chance. Oh! There's another smash ball. Yes, got it. Now! What are you charging up for? The English version. There's still more. Whack. Go on, you can take the hammer, but it's mine. Although I'm scared I might get hit with a counter in this state. I hit him! Yay! I was trying to fight using Byleth's abilities alone, but what matters is that I won. Good game. <laughs> it can be fun to play like this, especially in tag team, so I think it's a good idea to try imposing different types of challenges on yourself. The end. The end. <laughs> now, about the additional music. Since it's from the Fire Emblem series, we'll be adding each of the new tracks to all the Fire Emblem stages. There are already a lot of Fire Emblem tracks in the game. Our selection this time has been made taking those existing tracks into consideration. Eleven songs are being added. This includes an arrangement of the main theme in both Japanese and English. I hope you'll enjoy these as well. Okay, so when I told Netbug, how about that fifth ballot slot? She goes, give me Chorus Men or give me Death. I just want a, any character from a game I've characters. played. She doesn't know. <laughs> so this is Legend class. Of course she is. Also, there's a new classic mode route, a heroic legacy, which is designed to let you enjoy classic Fire Emblem stages. Oh, she thought it was 6 p.m. 
The final battle is against Master Hand and Crazy Hand. But you'll find that something pretty amusing happens, so look forward to that. Now for the Mii Fighter costumes. Please take a look. Oh crap, that did seem a little weird, she says, all in caps. Okay, probably gonna be the house leaders, right? I hate that these aren't included in the actual... <laughs> Altair? Not... Ex Assassin's Creed? Oh, that's funny! Oh no! <laughs> Why do I have a feeling people are going to be pairing that with the Sans coat? People are going to be hauling out me, Gunner, for this. Fire's oh, yeah. pass. Why not? We're already paying costumes. 25 bucks for it. And for those of you who purchased the Cuphead costume, an additional song will be added. It's called Floral Fury, and it's the theme that plays when fighting Cagney Carnation. <laughs> I hope you enjoy these as well. After purchasing a costume, I recommend using the sharing feature. If someone okay. has created a Mii Fighter, you can play using the costume it's wearing immediately after you download it. Alright. And now, on to the Amiibo. The color palette for Dark Samus looks pretty good, doesn't it? Dark Samus Not in this lighting, it doesn't. Release on Friday, January 17th. Uh, it's kind of scaly, though. That's pretty cool. And now, with the addition of Violet, the Fighter's Pass is finally complete. Sweet. The lineup was Joker, and now Hero, I'm going to be Banjo and Kazooie, Terry Bogart, and Violet. paying twenty-five dollars more. From more than seventy fighters, only five have been added. But I must say, this game has always been an exceptional experience, and since the roster was already so large to begin with, right from the start. We intended to make the most out of the new gameplay mechanics and so on. Nice, nice. There really were a lot of new mechanics, weren't there? When I mean, we add I guess. a new fighter, we don't simply make their attacks or their movements a little different. Instead, we try to offer you a whole new style of play. I just have fun with the characters. As I stated, we'll continue to release more DLC fighters down the line. Yay! I had thought that one or two might suffice, but, well, have a look. Man, I was very reacting to everything this evening, but I do not have the self-control not to see if this is before work. Let me just... Oh, whatever! The three was three... <laughs> None. Looks like there will be one more fighter than last time. Three was three hours of morning. For this reason, we will be releasing the Super Smash Brothers <laughs> Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume She's two. the one that's played it will be the game. For pre purchase on the date shown, so please keep an eye out. Ooh, they're and now that it's official, oh, it's we intend to move ahead with development. Of course, like last time, the contents will remain unknown for now, and I'm personally very sorry that we have to release Fighters Pass Volume 2 when the details have yet to be revealed. 
Like last time, I'd be very grateful if, I am okay. that, you would understand why and purchase it. Furthermore, the new additions have already been decided. Okay. Even if I receive many requests regarding potential candidates on Twitter, I'm afraid it would be very hard to consider them. <laughs> but I still hope you'll look forward to it. We're also including a bonus with Fighter's Pass Volume 2. Last time, it was a Rex costume. But this time, here's what we have. Oh. Uh... Huh. It's a Mii Fighter costume for me Sword Fighter. Oh, cute. The ancient soldier gear from the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Not exactly like a groundbreaking sort of thing, This will but not be for sale cute. individually, so it can only be acquired as part of Fighter's Pass Volume 2. <laughs> Bye, Guardian. Oh? Uh... It's been reported that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is the highest selling fighting game in the world. Personally, I don't know if it counts as simply a fighting game, but I guess it's seen as a fighting game around the world. Yeah, it's a fighting game. Why wouldn't it be? It seems like Street Fighter 2 was in the lead for a while, but now Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has surpassed it in total sales. However, I'm not sure if this is accurate. There were five versions of Street Fighter 2, or six to seven if you really want to get into the weeds. Plus, there's the arcade versions and the 25 ports to other systems, so I don't know if that's been accounted for. Also, I don't know if that really qualifies as one game. It's up for discussion. So, who knows? But when it comes to a single piece of software, it seems like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is number one. God, he has Although, nice hair. I still don't know if it can really be called just a fighting game. I feel like it's become more than a fighting game, some sort of celebration of gaming or something else entirely. Well, yeah, but it's also a fighting game. Also, I feel a deep attachment to the five DLC fighters. You're adorable, Sakurai. The first fighters pass just wrapped up, but it was decided that there will be more DLC, which means no breaks for me. I plan to keep working hard, so I hope you can continue to support us. That's it. Thank you. Yay! Well, it was cute. We got, you know, a new fighter. Um, Really not even in my top 25, but I'm not saying no. Uh... I don't even have a top 25, but I know they wouldn't be in it. Uh, I mean, if I was going to go with a strategy RPG character, um, probably someone like uh, what's his face from Final Fantasy Tactics? Ramza. Ramza Bailov, or however you say it. Or, um, you know, like I said, the main character from Pokemon Conquest. <laughs> <sighs> Cuphead isn't really gonna break the internet like Sans did, I don't think. Um, I had I had been thinking about um, who would be really good to have as far as um, like who could break the internet um, as far as when it comes to. Um, me fighters for uh, the the brawler and the sword fighter because you know Sans and now Cuphead are gunners. Um, this you know Altair is a good touch, but that's really weird how they listed that as the name of his series. The heck, what? But um. And I was thinking initially Gerald, but like I said earlier, uh, he is from a novel. A series of novels um, but the one I came up with that would break the internet is Sephiroth I think he would be a really interesting choice for a for a um, uh, sword fighter though I don't know he doesn't have the same mimetic status Oh. Oh. La 
lack of sleep is really catching up with me, guys. I can't do my trademark babbling. So, I can't think of anyone for Brawler who would be so mimetic. Um, and I don't just mean in the way of how people use the term memes. Uh, I mean, like, as far as, um, you know, breaking the internet, that sort of thing. I mean, Sans is mimetic, but he's mimetic because he's popular. Oh, you know, rather than I think the other way around. Um, gosh, you can really see my gray streak. I've actually had this since I was in my early 20s, which is really funny because it was right after X-Men had come out and I put a white streak in my hair like Rogue and it never went away. Yeah, this just happened to go right where the streak was. Anyway, though, I really gotta go back to bed. This is... It's fun. I am having a good time. I know I don't seem like it, but I am. I liked that. I enjoyed it. I, I may not seem like it. I know I'm considerably flatter than usual. And I, I did take my glasses off at one point and didn't draw attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so i gotta go get some water and then go back to bed because i really 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 wiped and i work later ah. i like being at work i don't like going to work you know like making the trek downtown especially last two days it snowed it hasn't stuck it's just been little flakes, but you can still see it snowing. Portland does not do well in the snow at all. It's really hilarious considering, it's like for God's sakes, we see snow all the time. We see Mount Hood constantly. And yet we are not prepared for when the flaky white stuff comes to our town. Okay. <sighs> Well, I guess I'd say bye, but instead right now, I say bye, Leth.